Navajo believe that they came out of the underworld as well. So these are themes that all tie into the Four Corners area. And it's very interesting that the various people, some of them were even adversaries in previous centuries, uh, that they all have similar legends about worlds within our world. If the premise that modern mankind originated from caverns deep below the earth is true, then is it also possible that there are entire civilizations still living underground in the Four Corners region? I live near Taos, New Mexico. And there is a phenomenon that is called the hum, the Taos hum, H-U-M. Uh, it is a, a, a vibration that is felt selectively by some people. Other people don't seem to know it at all. It usually happens between 2 and 4 a.m. when a lot of people are sleeping. And the hum, it's right on the verge of where you feel it in your heart and where you can just below the, the audible level. And no one knows where this hum is coming from. They brought in university researchers uh, back in the 1980s to try to triangulate where if they could find three locations where they found the hum and triangulate, they could find a source. And what they found was that it's coming from everywhere, suggesting that there is a vibration happening within the earth during those periods of time, two, three, four a.m., uh, that is being carried through the bedrock into these other areas. What is the source of that vib vibration? This is where the speculation comes in, that uh, these natural tunnels and the, the caves uh, and the caverns that our ancestors have talked about in the past uh, that already exist are being modified, perhaps, and used uh, in, in modern ways uh, for storage, for earth sensing, geosensing applications and, and things like that. So that is the where the scientific community kind of uh, has arrived, is that there is something, they think maybe it is the drilling the constant drilling uh, to modify these caverns that's creating the vibration. Since 1946, the U.S. government has been using Hopi land in the Four Corners region for explosive testing. Is it possible that, in fact, these tests are a cover-up? Could the military be using the ancient power of this area to run covert military programs? Or could their true agenda be to destroy something that was discovered underground, perhaps something from an ancient galaxy. Billy Carson entails his personal encounter at the Four Corners area. It appears that a lot of this activity and a lot of these tunnels congregate close to this Four Corners area. Now, there's well-known uh, stone-based stargates, is what the ancient Indians call them, and now the modern Indians are saying these are where their relatives used to go and put their heads in and actually chant some words and disappear. And then some of them will return. Last summer, I went to Arizona to see the Grand Canyon. We actually hired a helicopter and a guide to go down there because I wanted to find out if I can see any of these ancient mysteries that people had been talking about. And we landed on this Indian reservation down inside the canyon. And there's a special area that was cordoned off. So I said to the guy, I said, why can't I come over here? I don't understand. I don't see anything dangerous. He said, because NASA has taken over this part of the canyon. The way the grid system runs across the Earth, there are several places that are just like heavily energetic nodes. You'll find on many of these reservations and other holy lands held by natives that military groups have gone in and built facilities and made them off limits. Most of the time, these are actual entrances to this cavern system that honeycombs the entire Earth. A lot of these places are sacred to natives because they have stories going back many millennia of different types of beings taking them below the earth before cataclysms to protect them. And these are the same beings that after the cataclysm would bring them back to the surface of the earth to help them set up their civilizations again. A lot of these areas that the military will lock down are also very strong vortexes, which basically are nodes in this cosmic web stargate system. These are places that the military locked down because they don't want you to see what's coming and going through these gates. A lockdown? If this is true, who or what could possibly be traveling through these gates or in these underground caverns? Perhaps we should consider one of the less conventional theories of evolution. If it is possible that the DNA of human beings was originally bioengineered by ancient terrestrials, could this be a link? William Bramley points out how this idea is explained in Hopi folklore. 
you have this possibility, at least within the lore, you, you don't necessarily exclude skyborne gods from gods that lived underground because people had both ideas that, that the gods had realms underground, underwater, and in the sky, and they interacted with all of them. We already know there are very large caverns here and there. It may be, for example, that the South American tribe, maybe the Hopi, maybe they found some of these at one time, or at least they found caverns big enough where they believe that some of these things could transpire. So it's not necessarily a contradiction. It just means that the gods operated in these different realms. When we look at the creation stories of our past, as different as they are from one another, there are common themes that weave them all together. I find this fascinating because it is the local understanding of, uh, of a common heritage, I believe, that is preserved in the traditions of, of the, the modern indigenous peoples. One of the most, uh, the most obvious of these common threads is the theme of another world beneath this one. Uh, a world, subterranean world, from which our ancestors emerged. A lot of these themes from Native American folklore have found their way into modern day accounts of what I call modern folklore, which would be ufology, uh, cryptozoology, all these types of things, conspiracy literature. Really all this stuff is just an update of folklore. Um, it's the same stuff that people have done for, for centuries. Sometimes it contains truth, sometimes it contains uh, fabrications, sometimes people elaborate on what they, what they think something means. But we see these, these ideas of underworlds uh, involved with a um, variety of peoples around the world now emerging in these same areas. All these things touch on the same type of material. With these subterranean creation stories of the world from which our ancestors emerged, is there, perhaps, a code or a treasure that could have been left for us to figure out the truth of humanity's connections to the Four Corners? New Mexico, Arizona, the whole area around the Four Corners, and Utah, of course, and southern Colorado, it's actually one of the most spiritually active parts of North America. And this is why that part of, the, uh, of America is so, it draws so many people. Some of them might know it, some of them don't, but they are drawn there nevertheless. I think it's because the land is worked with. The land is a living organism. If you work with it, uh, just like watering a plant, it gives you something back. It gives you back a certain pleasure, and that's what you're attracted to. Uh, so that's why that part of the country is so important, because it's still alive. It's worked with on a daily basis, and you can feel that uh, as you just drive through it. Um, there is uh, the Navajo sites, there is uh, uh, Mesa Verde as well, uh, there is Bandelier. Uh, there's a kiva up on Bandelier that uh, if you happen to go there at the end of the day and time it so you don't get caught up inside the park, you have to climb up a hundred foot ladder and that place is perfectly positioned inside the natural cave in a really awkward area of the park because that's the one spot where the Earth's telluric currents just happen to cross. You know, and they're everywhere, these currents are everywhere, but they built this sacred site exactly where those currents cross and you go inside the kiva and you have this outer body experience because the, this energy is made of the same stuff that we're made of. It's literally just giving you a, a means, a technology in which to escape the physical world and connect to another level of reality. Greg Braden takes us deep into another structure in the Four Corners area that may give us an insight into how this location connects to the sky and what may lie below. One of the greatest mysteries that we're finding of ancient civilization is right in our own backyard for those of us that live in the United States, in the high deserts of northern New Mexico, Chaco Canyon. Something happened in Chaco Canyon 1,100 plus years ago that we have never seen in the history of the world before and we never saw duplicated since that time. We still do not know precisely who the people were that built Chaco Canyon, where they came from, why they had the advanced technology, why they had the mathematics, why they had the astronomy, the architecture, the ability to grow food in one of the most harshest environments. It's uh, uh, 12 miles long, two miles wide in some places. Within the canyon itself, there are over 2,800 archeological sites that have been recognized. Of those 2,800, 32 have been excavated, and because they cannot be sustained, many of them were reburied. 